Hello, my sewing friends. This is Friday Sews. Woohoo! I'm Jen and this is my sewing room and I want to start out this week's Friday Sews by just saying thank you. Thank you to all of the people that do a Friday Sews and who watch a Friday Sews and especially the creators that say Friday Sews was created by Jen and they go on, you know what? You all make the Friday Sews community and I can't thank you enough. I really can't. New creators that are just getting started, creators that have been around a while that just, you know, want to jump in and kind of join the community. And I just think that's fabulous. We have a sewing community at large, but the Friday Sews community really, I think adds a special touch to that. So thank you. So let's get going on the sewing. Let me tell you about Butterick 6775, which is here on the dress form. Uh, some things about this. This is a great dress. It's got a lot of architecture and style, and I really like the pattern. Um, I like the dress in the, on the pattern, <laughs> on the pattern envelope right here, I think. This is a jacket and a dress and a jumpsuit. And I love the detail on the back, which you can see has some problems. It needs to be taken in at the top of the zip, but it has this really cool, um, you know, thing where it's like the back is um, wrapped and then you have a little triangle of skin showing, which is about all the skin I want showing. So anyway, had a few problems with this. Uh, for one thing, the instructions are so convoluted not beginner friendly, even remotely. And uh, I just kept thinking there's gotta be a better way to do this. And there probably is, but uh, it's a lot of, I don't know, having to do the little fiddly things. Like at the top, you wait until almost to the end and then you join the front to the back by leaving the back folded down and then you bring these seams, you stitch them and then you have to hand stitch the lining closed. I hate that kind of stuff. And I always avoid it if I can. And I really think you could have if you use the burrito method. So hmm, let me know if you've made this. It's got a few things that need to be changed, but you know, all in all, it's a pretty dress and I like it and I'll wear it when I get it done. And right now I'm tired of it. So it's gonna be right there until I wanna deal with it again. Also up is Simplicity 9222. Cute dress, isn't it? Look at the model. Uh -huh. It's the angle she's turned. <laughs> I actually looked at Instagram and pattern review before I decided that I wanted to make this dress. And I had some reservations and I should have I followed my gut, to be honest. Um, so I made it out of this um, cotton knit that I found at Joann's. It's one of their pop knits and I love the fabric, but here's the thing. You cut this, like you lay your fabric out, you unfold it and lay it out flat. And then you cut the pieces one at a time. And you do that because it's asymmetrical. And I wasn't paying attention and cut the skirt, two of them right side up the same way. And so, yeah, that's not gonna work. So I had to go get some more fabric, uh, which is such a pain to have to go into a fabric store, you know. Uh, anyway, I tried it on and I, I have the same problem that I saw on the other people that posted pictures. Yeah, the thing is the pleats are in kind of just the wrong place where they fall like this and it really accentuates a substantial tummy, which I have. So hmm, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I will fix it. I only have one dress form available, so I couldn't put this on there, but I'm gonna fix it. I'm not sure how, I, if I'm gonna convert the pleats to smaller pleats or if I'm going to just shear it, like gather it. Uh, I don't know, maybe raise the pleats, that might help. I don't know. Maybe just take the pleats out altogether and make it just straight. I don't know, but I'm gonna fix it. So. Yeah, that's that. I did this morning need some coasters. Well, I've needed coasters for my car, my drink holders in my car. And I decided to make some just little quilty things. So I did. 
I am not going over to the quilt side of things. Everybody calm down. <laughs> I think I'm of the opinion uh, that I just maybe once in a while when I have some challenges, I just need a palette cleanser. If I could just put together a simple quilt block, then I'd be sewing, but I wouldn't be making a quilt wouldn't be overwhelming. So I don't know, maybe I'll do some of that because it's simple sewing. Moving on to fabric that I got in the mail this week. This is an art gallery from my friend Trish. Feels divine. It feels like Raylan Poplin. Poplin and uh, yeah, it's got turtles on it. <laughs> it's this eggplant purple. I just love this. I just, oh man, it's just the most beautiful fabric. So thank you again, BFF. Uh, up next is this top, which also came from Trish. Well, the pieces did, <laughs> and then I put it together. And uh, it's long, it's asymmetrical. And it, I mean, this point kind of hits me at about my knee. So I was thinking I could either shorten it or I, since I have the same fabric, because we are of the same mind. Uh, it's from Joann's. It's a silky. And I thought, well, I can just cut a skirt and attach it to the top. So I'm going to do that. My brain's kind of tired with all the challenges. And I'm kind of thinking, eh, I'll deal with that tomorrow. <laughs> uh, as to life, we had a hurricane, but it kind of went right by us. It was out to sea about 175 miles. Of course, we had our eye on it. I love weather. I just love it. And so, you know, we're watching it and watching it and we got some thunderstorms and that was about it. It was kind of like every other day. So yeah, uh, thankful that it went right by. Have to say that as it would making landfall up on the, it's called the Big Bend of Florida. It's where the Panhandle meets the peninsula, right around Tallahassee there. As it made landfall that night, we had a tree from the lot next door fall on our house and it scared us to death because Mark and I, our bedroom is right under where it hit and it scared the daylights out of us, but it was fine. And the roof was fine. Let's move on to comments. Jane Franklin. Okay, Jane Franklin is amazing and here is why. As a teacher now going into my 48th year, 48, okay. Okay, brief round of applause for Jane. Yes, 48 years this woman has been teaching, teaching children. Wow. She says, I always try to make my first day of school dress. She missed a couple of years, and she says, on those years, I didn't have as much teaching success. Hmm. So my homemade dress has become a good luck charm for me. Then she talks about what she made this year. She says, wish me a successful year. Hopefully this will be a good class so that I have more time at the sewing machine. <laughs> Cynthia Lindsley says, I made a new dress for my daughter and shirts for the boys on the first day of school. I think that's kind of cool that you don't ever often hear about boys getting a new outfit made by mom. I think that's cool. Nita Wilmhoff says, made my boys new outfits every year until they were too cool for it. <laughs> too cool for school. Oh boy. And then uh, I was wearing a sundress last week and I had had some challenges getting the fit right. And so a lot of you have a lot of great ideas, most of them having to do with using my upper vest measurement to judge what size I need, which actually I already do. And also doing an FBA. I, that hadn't occurred to me because I usually don't need one. I don't usually have problems with fitting around my bust, but, but I do have gaping armholes on a regular basis. So I think this one had um, gaping armholes too. This is New Look 6428 and I borrowed some circular pockets from a Laura Ashley vintage dress and I love them. I just love them and I used buttons from Carol from So Carol. Okay back to the comments. Uh, Bunny Pep says as for the fit I believe you need a different approach but one hard to fix once cut and sewn. Yeah no kidding. 
She says, I would do an FBA next time. Good advice. Amy Krenzel says, the sundress you have on needs a full bust adjustment next time you make it. Mm -hmm. And Teresa, whose name I cannot pronounce her last name, you need a full bust adjustment for every garment you do. If you would do that, you would be happier with the fit. Dara Harper says, maybe try using your high bust measurement as your for your pattern size. And then Julie Mooley says, Palmer and Plesh has a DVD full busted, so close that fit. That was most helpful for me. Well, again, I'm not large busted, really. I'm very average when it comes to being busted. <laughs> and I said a way to say that. Uh, yeah, I, I'm just average. And that's why the block from the big four often fits me fine. So I will try this. I will try a full bust adjustment and see if I can alleviate the gaping armholes. Because I also watched Annika in, on uh, Made to Sew. Is that, I think that's what her YouTube, I'll link the YouTube channel up here where she talks about that. And I don't know. I'm not sure how much of a bust adjustment I need to make. I'll figure it out. Anyway, thank you so much for all of your tips. I also talked about threading my serger tails back into the seam because they were at the end of a, an armhole seam here and I didn't want them to show. And I had a devil of a time trying to do that with a big needle. And so several of you had um, uh, solutions for that and very good ones too. Kay Castillo says, for serger tails, try a dental floss threader. They are so handy for sewing and paper crafting. I will try that. And then Nancy Helpinstill says, you can buy a basic tool for your serger tails. They are widely available and it's like a really fat plastic needle with an eye at each end. I need to place a Wawak order. That still sounds wrong to me. It should be way whack. A Wawak order and that's a Notions uh, place. Um, and you can order online and it's great for thread and other notions. I will probably see if they've got one. And then last one, Roiland Munsey says, with regard to school dresses, she says, I made my own and my mom made them when I was little. No little ones for me now. So I sew some dresses for Project dress -a girl which is the whole month of September. It, this is an event. It's a charity event hosted by Madi or Madi Sews. And we make dresses for little girls that might never get one. I've made one so far, which I will talk about in a video where I only talk about Project Dress a Girl. This is from a free pattern that's available from Lisa, Alisa at Thoughtful Creativity. And uh, there are labels available from Madi and uh, they've been redesigned and I love these. I really do. So we'll talk about that more later, but it is happening the whole month of September. So if you want to participate, you can. I'm going to leave you with my little prayer card, which says the joy of the Lord is your strength. That is from Nehemiah 8:10. Yes, it is. I am strong because I am joyful. That joy gives me strength. Yeah. We're talking about the God of the universe here that made everything. Nothing can stand up to him. And he is mine and I am his, and that makes me joyful, and that makes me strong. So I hope that's true for you too. I will see you next time. Thanks again for watching and participating in the Friday Sews community. And that's it for now for me.